Uh, my name is I am going to be giving my testimony as to why I left the Hebrew Israelites. Um, I was a part of uh, GOCC for a lot of years, uh, eight and a half years, almost nine years. And um, this is just a story about how God, uh, His grace, saved me out of that false theology with all those false doctrines. And uh, I would come to find out that the this worldview and the means by which the Bible was to be understood was a black Hebrew Israelite theology. This, this happened when an uncle of mine, he brought a, a DVD to, to myself and to my, my older brother. And um, he presented this DVD. He said, you know, guys, watch this and let me know what you think. We watched it and uh, it was uh, GOCC, elder, GOCC elder recall teaching that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were the literal descendants of ancient Israelites. They would primarily, like all other One West groups, point to Deuteronomy 28 as support for their belief, where God is inst instituting the potential covenant curses for the disobedience of Israel. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. There, sh there ye should be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you, or no man shall redeem you. Uh, that was the primary text. There's, there's various curses. Uh, listed in this chapter, but that text they hung on to because that's what prophesied slavery. At all familiar with uh, with vocab's ministry, there's a, there's a whole lot of history that goes into this. At all familiar with uh, with vocab's ministry, there's a, there's a whole lot of history that goes into this. There's a whole lot of history that goes into this. I would say this version of Hebrew Israelite starts in, I think it goes back to the 40s. It goes back pretty far. Uh, where where um, uh, blacks in in uh, New York are actually taught by Jewish rabbis, and and this man begins to identify with what he's reading, and they to me seem like these guys know the, know the Bible better than Christians do, and oftentimes, oftentimes for, for Christians who are who are slack in their study of Scripture, that's true. These cults they know the Bible, and then they show forth what they teach to be proper right proper hermeneutics proper interpretation into errors and say this has been tampered with this has been corrupted right this has been changed um, and as well they would point to books outside of scripture books of Enoch uh, the Apocrypha um, and they would say that these books are also uh, divinely inspired super some super graphical books as well because I, I came up against Christians on the street all the time and oftentimes they were they were very poorly matched they were very very poorly equipped No, Christ is saying there's none good but God, and he is God. No, Christ is saying there's none good but God, and he is God. These verses are just not flowing into my head about the goodness of Christ. And, 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 and something is changing in me in that moment as I'm starting to comprehend this. Christ is good, and therefore Christ is God. And that happened quite literally in a moment. So as I rejected the Trinity, right, I rejected uh, salvation by grace alone, right? I rejected uh, uh, the full deity of Christ, right? All of these tenets of, of biblical Christianity, I rejected them in a moment, I believed. It's kind of how they think. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's it, for GOCC, it really would be about uh, a church structure. You just couldn't have any authority. But other groups would say, you have no salvation. They'll tell you plainly, you're going to be a slave. We were slaves, you're going to be a slave. And GOCC believes that too. They just won't say it so plainly. But for the average Hebrew Israelite, they will say they have no security and their salvation. And I would say, if you have no security in salvation, you don't have salvation. But for the average Hebrew Israelite, they will say they have no security in their salvation. And I would say, if you have no security in salvation, you don't have salvation. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim, Recha Ha Kwadash. And double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Also, a sincere shalom to you other fellow followers and believers of the truth. You other brethren as well. And shalom to the elect. I want to go in this video here with this guy um, who's completely backwards now. Went back into the world. He's lost his way. Um, 
he's a follower of vocab now he was with GOCC I don't know if he's done other videos I just happened to see this one and uh, I'll just say that this is an embarrassment to himself not to the Israelite believers the community right we'll say an embarrassment to himself you know to wake up you came into the truth you found out you were an Israelite you know now us we were brought up in Christianity so that's a different you know that's a different you know a whole new different avenue this guy we came out of the Christian church we found out the truth and somehow everything he's learned in GOCC although GOCC is off but whatever he's learned he went back to following the plantationism now if anybody reads like our history before we were slaves in the history books were nothing we were just some African booty scratchers that was in the jungle scratching and swinging from vines this is what they say about us they're not going to tell you your history is anything history anything before the say the 1600s 1500s we know in the 1400s when they started coming into power but anything before that Anything before we came into slavery, you were nothing. So what were we? He says that the, um, we found out about the Hebrew Israelites in the 40s, which vocab says during the Civil War. But when you look at the writings on that church of, uh, I think, Atlanta, I'm not sure, the first black African, so-called black African church, we were speaking Hebrew with a mixture of Igbo and Yoruba and various other languages. So... When we came into slavery, even way before then, right, what were we doing? We were singing to the Lord. We were singing Negro spirituals, Kumbaya, Kumbaya, uh, ya, Swing Low Sweet Chariot. So that was our heritage. What did they do? They took it. So if you want to go to anything going back to Christianity when it come to us, the so-called white man has put plantationism, Christianity on us. That's when we became so-called black Christians. And that's when we start celebrating and worshiping Christmas trees, right? Let me get a scripture. Isaiah 30, 31 and 1. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. And they, tr they, they trust in all the benefits. You know, this is nothing new. This was a guy who probably came back and, you know, he had his heritage. He knew he was an Israelite. This was a guy hundreds of years ago <clears throat> that helped other so-called blacks fall, you know, Israelites, let me say that, other Israelites rock, uh, go, go to sleep and follow Christianity. He's only doing what he was set up to do from the beginning. <clears throat> He's the same guy back doing the same thing. I don't know if this guy was some agent from the beginning just to spy out the liberties. But he was in the truth nine years, so I don't think so. I just think this was a guy that the truth got a little hard for him. It was easier to sin, you know. These are main guys that say don't keep the laws, but then they always want to sin. And he said in the video that it's not about sinning. So he wants to correct the Christians. So now you see all them Christians, nobody's sitting up there paying this guy any attention, right? They're walking back and forth, but they're trying to learn off of him, man. And that's what vocab and them is set up to do. They set up spies. You want to know why they set them up? So they can sit there and have these councils and conferences and learn off of you and learn off of our doctrine to see how to switch it up and how to put our people back to sleep. Right? That's their whole agenda. First Peter um, 4 and 16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Right? But this man is, should be ashamed. But let him glorify Yahweh on this behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of Yahweh. Right? The house of Israel. So wait a minute. This Bible is only speaking about the Israelites, man. Okay? It's, it's, you know, when, when that uh, condemnation come, right? It's going to come on two-thirds of you Israelites. We already know that what's going to happen to this, to this man in the system. And if it first begin with us, what shall it be? What shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of Yahweh? 
And if the righteous shall scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Right? So, yes, we teach that we can't fall proof and say with the, that we're saved. That's what's wrong with these Christians, man. You believe in the word of God, you saved. That's crazy. Half of you in relationships and don't even believe the message you say in your own relationships. You say you love somebody and you don't. That person believes it because you said it. Right? But that's how it is, man. That's how it is. That's what happens to these guys. They have lost the way. And, you know, I just wanted to touch on that because it's, it's not much to say about it except that this guy, everything he was taught, he flushed, right? And it's really an embarrassment for you to stand up there as a man that knew the truth, even though you was a GOCC bug out, but you knew the truth and you heard the truth and you didn't carry on the truth or come into the true understanding of the truth. Instead, you go back. What did that say about your character? Right? Should have never came in. Let's see that. Uh, 2 Peter 2 and 22. 2 and 21. For it had been better for them. Let me go to 20. For, after, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of Yahweh, right? So you can't say the Christian churches escaped the pollution of the world. You can, they tell you, you don't have to worry about the laws. You can eat the polluted crabs. You can eat the polluted pig, the shrimp, right? You could commit, basically, they don't really fight against adultery because there's so much adultery going on in the churches. They're not fearing the Lord, man. That are again entangled there and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So really, once you come into the truth and you fall backwards, it was better for you to just had stayed out and continued that path because this is really going to bug this Jake out, right? But it had happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned into his own vomit again and the soul was washed to her wallowing in the mire, right? That's that's these guys, man. That's these wicked Jake. Uh, let's get this last one here. This is uh, Sirach 2 and 14. It say, Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? So, you know, going back to this so-called Christianity, going back to the Reformation, where they was fighting each other over our scriptures, they set out the Jesuits and those priests and all those, uh, those so-called soldiers, whatever you want to call them, the Bible thumpers, Christian Bible thumpers, they set out with a cross, right? And they went into West Africa. They went into well, Spain and Europe. They went to everywhere the Israelites were and conquered them, right? And then forced it on them, even on the way on the um, on the ships. They was bringing that Christianity right over here, and and how they made it work is they set up taskmasters in the name of Christianity to teach the gospel in huddles and crowds and then you had our people who didn't want to believe that and they even wrote a book on how to um, make a slave Christian so if he you had to make him a Christian what the hell was he before a so called uh, white Christian because there's nothing wrong with Christians but when it came to this wicked Christianity that was the that was the key and they knew they wasn't the people of the most high man and then once they fueled it all over the rest of the world, then the, the world believed it. The people in that land believed that they're the people of the most high. But the elites, those top men that run this thing, they know, man. And there's other people who know because the truth is coming out. So this is why they got to get guys like this, set them up as some, you know, old, you know, old building, a controlled environment. And, and you know, and then they make mockery of them because they put that, big podium up with the cross on the front, right? <laughs> you know? And they're making a joke out of them. They're making a complete joke out of this Jake. That's, they ain't even paying attention to him. They're just looking at him, seeing, yeah, we broke him. Look at him. They probably go home and drink tequila or something, man, and, and get nice. 
and joke about it. And it's Jake deserves it. That's all I have on that, Shalom.